So are you guys uh, like Bob's Somebody's been gone. Um, are teachers like posting everything on Canvas and stuff? Or keeping up with it? Yeah. You think we're going to go over that again? Uh, that's going to have to come from the state of Kansas. Um, so, as far as, you know, like doing remote days and stuff like that, um, like we asked for. We asked for some like remote Wednesdays. Yeah. We get through this. We do this slide. Sorry. What's your confession? Hey, uh, there's a pass for you up there, sister. So we talked about uh, health, education, life expectancy, measles. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did I do show you this? No. No. Okay. We'll start here. Uh, this is pretty interesting, and I, I apologize. I know this is dated. It says 1995, guys. Um, but this shows you by country and by gender, like longest life expectancies. I've been able to find one like this colorful and nice before, uh, like uh, more updated. But uh, you can see, obviously, women live longer than men, right? Because men are stupid uh, and do dumb things, and they live they don't live as long. Um, there's actually a lot of reasons, but um, when you look at the countries. Uh, you see, the United States does not rank as high as a lot of other countries. And, and you, you, I mean, you know that the main reason for that is, right? Why we don't live as long in this country? Because of our diet. Our diet, exactly. The number one killer in America is heart disease. Okay? And the food we eat, which we like uh, fast food, we like fried food, right? Um, it clogs our arteries. When your arteries get clogged, you have heart attacks, you get heart disease, and you die. Yes? We, a lot of people smoke in this country, not as many as you used to, which also tends to clog your arteries, okay? Um, and so forth. So uh, the, a couple other things that really lead to that, guys, is uh, automobile accidents, which is the third largest killer in the United States. Hey, welcome back. Have you been watching my videos at all? I know. I see that. I was like, there's one view. I assume it was you. Okay. Good job. Um, hope they were mildly entertaining. I kept most everybody asleep while you were uh, asleep, uh, awake while you were gone. Okay. Um, now, yeah, cancer is the number two killer. You got heart disease, cancer, and then you get automobile accidents. Uh, and we drive a lot in this country. So, like in countries like Japan, I mean, people drive, but or, you know, uh, Europe, public transportation, you know what I mean? Uh, trains. We just don't use those as much. Okay. And so we, you know, drive dangerously and live dangerously and uh, die earlier. Okay. Um, kind of who, oh, the other thing is uh, we got a lot of guns too. Okay. This is the Wild West still. Okay. And so you open a newspaper, right? Turn on the radio, watch the local news almost every day. You know what I mean? Somebody gets shot in our community, which is horrible. Okay. And now you guys heard about the nightclub shooting downtown. Oh, it happened this weekend. Actually, um, so this guy got kicked out of the bar, came back with a gun and started shooting people. He shot seven people. Five of them were women. One of them died. He's, a, he's an African-American gentleman um, who's a bartender, and he's married to a former student of Bishop Carroll. Okay, so she lost her husband and had two small kids. Yeah. Uh, he was the bartender at 12. At 12? Yeah, I think he might have done the light bulb thing, too. Okay. But I always saw him. But and it sounded like, like he was a great guy. guy. He was. Yeah. A lot of people that work at 12 yeah. um, said that, like, he just lit the place up. Yeah. They didn't catch the guy. Okay. Um, God, that just breaks my heart. So, not to make light of the gunplay in the United States, you know what I mean? But it, it is a factor in our life as well. Okay. Um, do you, anybody know what this is? 
This isn't like um, a record player. <laughs> I love people trying to explain it. Uh, yeah, so phone, phonograph, right? It's a phonograph. All right, so you got to crank this thing, get it going, and then it spins, okay? And there, you put a vinyl record on it, and you play music, and it comes out the megaphone, okay? Um, guys, how many of you have a record player at home still? That's it, huh? Uh, I got a great album collection from the 70s and 80s, because this is what we grew up listening to with records. Um, did some crazy stuff, you know, like spin them backwards. There's like messages in there. Oh yeah. You guys know that song, uh, Another One Bites the Dust by Queen? Play that backwards. Yes. I love to smoke marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> Done it. Had the single. A little 45. Okay, and then you have the 33s, which are the bigger albums, right? Led Zeppelin 4. You've all heard the song Stairway to Heaven. Okay, I'm sending chills up your spine right here. Okay, because that's what happens when you listen to it, because it's freaking creepy, man. Like, this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're, like, you're with a group of your friends, and you're like, oh, dear, get down. You know, <laughs> Seriously, man, vinyl. Um, you can skip, you know, pick up the needle and move to the next song, which is nice, right? And then we got cassette tapes. You guys know what cassettes are, right? Yes. This is a little tape recorder, it's a cassette player, okay? Those are all really baby ones. Yeah, and these are cassettes, yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, you could record from the radio. It's like if you had a, a thing, like you could hear a song on the radio and hit record, okay? And uh, you could make, you know, if you had an album player, you could play record players and then record it on one of these, okay? And then put that in your cassette player on your car, okay? Before that, they had the 8-tracks. You guys heard of the 8-tracks? The cool thing about the 8-track is you could go to the next song. You could flip to the next song. Cassettes, you got to fast forward and try and stop it at the right time to play the next song, which wasn't very good. And then CDs, right? Which we still, some people use, right? CDs? <laughs> A little bit, yeah. Uh, and then uh, digital music, you know, the iPod. Uh, so, the, yeah, I mean, this is where it begins. Uh, the cool thing about this, guys, these vinyl, the early ones, is you could buy blank ones and record your own voice on them. So for the first time, people... Like, heard their own voice recorded. Remember when you did your first uh, voicemail recording and heard it played back? You're like, ooh, I sound funny. Because this is like the first time people are like, whoa, this is cool, man. Okay, this is a 1920s refrigerator. All right, so the cooling unit is on top here, okay? And then this is basically a glorified cooler underneath it, okay? Uh, insulated and so forth. So before we had refrigerators, what do you do? How do you keep stuff cold? Well, you could you could put stuff underground. It's cooler down there. In water, okay. Now, if, if you don't want like stuff to spoil, you could like put salt on it, preserve to preserve the meat and stuff like that, right? But to keep things cold, it was difficult. Now you could have an ice box. So like a cooler, basically, right? You put ice in the cooler. The Yetis are really good. It doesn't melt. Okay, they weren't that good back then. Okay, most aren't that good. Uh, but anyhow, so where do you get ice? Right? Oh, but then how do you freeze it if you don't have a freezer? Right. Exactly. Okay, so in the wintertime, uh, in the north, lakes, rivers would freeze. And so people, this was a job. People would go out and cut blocks of ice like this. And then they would transport them to wherever they need to be in the wintertime. Okay. So uh, you guys, uh, you guys been to the South? What do they drink in the South? What kind of tea? Sweet. It's only sweet. They don't serve unsweet tea in the South. It's like, you want tea? It's sweet. Yeah, okay. It's real. Have you heard of Southern hospitality? Yes. It's a real thing, people. It really is. Okay. So let's say you're living in hot Atlanta, Georgia in 1900. And you're going to have company over, okay? And you're going to serve iced tea. 
Okay? How do you do that in Hot Atlanta, Georgia in 1900? Well, in the wintertime, the ice truck comes, and you dig a hole in your backyard called a cellar. And you put the ice in the cellar where it's cooler, okay? And hope that it stays cold enough in there so it doesn't melt. And you have ice throughout the year, okay? Now, there's something you can put over the ice to help keep it from melting. And don't say salt. That melts ice. What do you put on top of the? No. Sawdust. Sawdust helps insulate it so it doesn't melt. So you go down. You're going to have company over, Southern Hospitality, Sweet Tea. You go down to the cellar. Now, hopefully, you got concrete on the floor or something. Otherwise, it's going to be muddy. Because it is going to melt some, right? And you take an ice pick and you take a chip off the old block. You ever heard that saying? That's where that comes from. Off a block of ice, and then you have ice for your iced tea, okay? You're probably going to have some sawdust in your iced tea, which people got used to. I mean, it was just part of the thing, okay? As long as the chunks aren't too bagged, it won't rip up your gut too much, you know what I mean? Okay, so good story. I think it is. We take our refrigerators for granted. I think. It's true. Yeah, it's very, it's awesome. They have a freezer too that you can freeze stuff. I mean, it's, it's awesome. Do you yeah. know what's a great tea place? HBO. Oh my god. I don't drink tea. Yeah. You like tea? I, I only like drink tea. tea. Yeah. My wife's a big fan. Okay, guys, this is some of the fun stuff like uh, we saw in the video, right? So we covered a lot of this. Let me just kind of gloss over this kind of quickly. Uh, speakeasies were illegal bars. Um, you know, the video I was trying to show you, YouTube took it down. But both videos that I showed my honors classes earlier in the day talked about Texas Guyna, who ran a speakeasy in New York City. So she must have been really famous. She called everybody sucker, okay? Because they come in and they get, like, watered down alcohol and pay $100 a bottle. You know what I mean? So they're suckers, all right? But they're having fun. In 1927, New Year's Eve, it was going to usher in 1927. In the New York Times, there were 5,000 advertisements for New Year's Eve parties with alcohol, even though it was against the law. I mean, they just openly publicized it. Okay, people didn't care, all right? And so uh, people went on. And then, and then women, guys, this is really a sexual revolution. Okay, listen, at the turn of the century... Your dress or your skirt, if it re revealed a glimpse of the ankle, dude, that was risque. I mean, like, you need to lengthen that dress. I can see your ankle. Okay. By the 20s, they shot up to the knee and above. Women actually wore lipstick in public. And someone even smoked in public. Do you believe that? Listen, there's still a lot of old-fashioned Americans that are like, this is wrong. Women shouldn't act like this. You know what I mean? But women are done with it. They're just like, I'm done with your rules for me, men. Okay? So this is really a, a liberation for women. Okay? Throwing off, you know, the restraints. Uh, we see this again in the late 1960s and early 70s with for women. Uh, this is more in the 60s and 70s, more of a feminist movement okay so things like burning bras and stuff like that like bras are instruments of oppression created by men we're gonna burn them okay that kind of thinking all right uh everybody thinks differently about the genders and sexes and all that but uh anyhow the women cut their hair short they had these cute cloche hats and so forth and uh they danced and they boogied and they had fun okay and the music was amazing okay Jazz, ragtime, blues. And uh, the video talked about this, like people like Louis Armstrong and people, the music that has stood the test of time. I mean, like some of the crap you guys listen to today, it's like, we'll listen to it this year in 2021. No one will never hear it again because it sucks. Okay, but some of this music, guys, it just lasts and lasts and lasts. I mean, who doesn't love Louis Armstrong? Louis Armstrong's amazing, okay? Um, the, and you find the influence of this music and pretty much every kind of music you listen to today, whether it's R&B, hip hop, rap, classic rock. I'm a big classic 
rock guy? I just mentioned Led Zeppelin a minute ago. Any Led Zeppelin? Dude, their music is amazing. And, and if you listen to some of their rock, the blues just ooze out of that music. It's so awesome, man. It's just got such a comforting uh, sound to it. And uh, it's deep. It's it's not shallow. You know what I mean? Uh, so, I mean, it was, a, it was a great time. Dances, all different kinds of dances people were doing. It was a fun decade. You know what I mean? And so a lot of those dances still exist, they're around and so forth. And now we move on. So guys, for the first time really in America, people have what's called discretionary income. So at the end of the month, they actually have money left over. They've paid all their bills and they've got money to spend. And they have time to spend it. We get into the 40 hour work week, you got the weekends off, let's go out and have a good time. I wanna be entertained. This is where we see sports just freaking take off. Okay, and one of the biggest ones that I don't have up here is college football. Okay, the biggest, the most uh, famous person wasn't a player, but a coach. The coach of Notre Dame. Who is he? Any Notre Dame fans in here? Did you see the movie Rudy? You haven't seen Rudy? Rudy? Yes. Junior. It's mid. It's <laughs> mid. I've watched this. It's mid. It's <laughs> mid? Mid. Like, that much year. Oh, it's a good movie. It's a good movie. It's all Denzel and Delilah. Like, were they just making fun of them? <laughs> I mean, in real life. Like they, when they were saying, Rudy. Like, in real life, weren't, weren't they just making fun of him? Well, yeah, I'm sure there was a lot of that. But he didn't care. He got to play. It was his dream. You know how hard it is to play football at Notre Dame? Especially back in that, or even today. First of all, to get into the school when you're not a good student, how are you going to get in? You know what I mean? How do you get into Notre Dame? Any of you guys getting into Notre Dame? Huh? I see how you guys are getting into Notre Dame. Okay? So you want, I'm not going to laugh at you. Okay? Huh? Josh Vo? Yeah. Yeah. Josh Vo? Yeah. Okay. Josh Vo. Well, and then before him, like, uh, Gus Hank. He went to Notre Dame. Yeah. He's still there. And then, and then his high school girlfriend at the time, Helen. Helen Wynn. She went to Notre Dame, too. Okay? That was a power couple. I don't think they're together anymore. Taco. That's all right. People go apart. Yeah. Do different things. Okay? But anyhow, yeah. So anyhow, you get in, and then you, how do you get on the team? Make the team. You're not on scholarship. You're walk-on. You're five foot nothing, and you're really even not that good. Dude, he came out of the tunnel. They made a movie about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Who among you are going to make a movie about me? Let's go. Let's go. Okay? Somebody, we're going to make a movie out of somebody. Yeah, I mean, let's take that. Okay. All right, so. Um. Uh, College football, golf. Any golfers in here? Yeah. Stucky, Stucky. Okay. Yeah, uh, Stucky, if you're watching this, a uh, couple of really good moves. I mean, golf really took off in the early 1900s here in the States. Huge, huge crowds. Okay. Uh, there's a couple of really good movies. Uh, one called uh, The Greatest Game Ever Played. Yeah. Uh, it's not mid or whatever it said. <laughs> Okay. Um, what you say? Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore. Yeah. <laughs> um, then there's another one called The Legend of Bagger Vance. Really good movie. Okay. About this time period. Uh, boxing. Uh, they might have mentioned this in the video. This is uh, Jack Dempsey fights Gene Tunney, a former Marine. They go rematch. Okay. Uh, in Philadelphia, in front of 120,000 people, guys. I mean, these are massive crowds. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, the national pastime baseball. 
Okay, in the 1927 Yankees, maybe the greatest team ever assembled. Now, back in those days, guys, they didn't have lights for the games. So the game started at 3.30. So if you go look back at old Major League Baseball footage, people are all dressed up in suits. Women are wearing dresses and hats. And guys are wearing hats. Freaking hot, man. You ever sat through a game at Kauffman Stadium up in Kansas City in August in, in a day game? You get some swamp ass going on? Seriously, man. You know, it's hot. Can you imagine wearing a suit? like wearing shorts and a t-shirt right people used to dress up okay we don't do that when i started teaching here man i'd wear a tie every day dress shoes i'm wearing tennis shoes no tie you know you still have to wear a uniform okay but anyhow um yeah so golf i mean the masters to me man i gotta watch the masters you guys know what i'm talking about the masters the course itself is part of the entertainment. It's so beautiful. It's in Augusta, Georgia. Uh, the Masters is a, it's a, uh, uh, one of the best events in sports every year, in my opinion. Okay. Yeah, okay. You got Babe Ruth. Now, I'm interested to know. You heard Babe Ruth before? Babe Ruth. Yeah, seriously. Babe Ruth. Okay, there we go. Non has a Babe Ruth. Yeah. Well, he's he's pretty new. He's pretty new here. Okay. Uh, Babe Ruth was the great Bambino, the Sultan of Swat, the luscious clout, the Babe. Okay. He was the greatest player ever. He's fat, big fat guy. Okay. He hit home runs, home runs. You know that was his thing. He hit 60, uh, 60 in one year, okay? The next closest had what? 12, I think they said in the video. The year he broke it, the next most was 12. He had 60, okay? This uh, is Lou Gehrig, okay? Um, you guys remember the ALS challenge, the, the ice bucket challenge, dumping it on your head? Um, ALS is also known as Lou Gehrig's disease, okay? Named after... This man right here. So you can see he's just as big as Babe Ruth. But, dude, he's a freaking athlete. I mean, he's like a linebacker playing baseball. He's a beast, okay? Uh, he hit 47 home runs one year when Ruth hit 60 again, okay? The, facing that lineup, now one of the most uh, touching moments in baseball history, when Lou Gehrig got sick with ALS, he was kind of the most famous person to ever have it. So they, you know, his health began to deteriorate. Um, and so he, he was going to retire from baseball. But, you know, he's still a great player. He gave this speech in front of Yankee Stadium. Packed house. That I consider myself to be the luckiest man on the face of the earth to being able to play baseball for the New York Yankees and do what I have done, okay? Very touching moment. Uh, he would die about a year later, okay? Um, so, yeah, it, you know, 5 o'clock, but starts, you know, get later innings, these guys, you don't want to face these guys if you're a pitcher. I mean, it's a nightmare, okay? Uh, so, yeah, sports is huge. And then, of course, Lucky Lindy or Charles Lindbergh, okay? So, like, if you were to say... If I were to go to China, if I were going to go to uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, if I were to go to Canada, and I were to go to Northern Europe, who would be somebody that every somebody in every one of those parts of the world knew, like knew their name today? Back then, in 1927, Charles Lindbergh, everybody knew who he was, everywhere in the world. Maybe not in a village in Ethiopia, but everywhere else. Who is that person today? The most famous person in the world today. Who? Ronaldo's up there. I would say Donald Trump as well. The other one would be LeBron James. You know who that is? No. 
<laughs> well, let's ask Nana. Can she you, knows who that is. Do you know See? You, you know. know In the 1980s, Michael Jackson. Oh, yeah. Everybody knew Michael Jackson. Not as much. But Prince is better. We established that. Um, and then Michael, Michael Jordan in the late 80s, early 90s. Okay. That was, that was Lindbergh, man. Everybody knew he was. Guys, 33 and a half hours in a plane by yourself. He won a $25,000 prize. Okay. He was a mail delivery guy. He would deliver mail for the U.S. Postal Service. Nobody knew who he was. Okay, He says, well, I'm going to win this prize. So he fills up his plane with fuel. It's called the Spirit of St. Louis, the name of his plane. Okay, Fills it up. Okay, Barely gets over the treetops as he leaves the runway in New York. Okay, You guys ever stay up 30, uh, 24 hours in, all night before and not go to sleep? I think she did last night. <laughs> Every night. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, you know how you feel, right? Uh, have any of you guys ever flown on an airplane? Okay, sleep? Yeah. My wife, I mean, as soon as they take off, dude, she's, she's out. I mean, any of you guys like to sleep with like a humming noise or a fan going in the background, something like that? Okay, yeah. So you're flying over the Atlantic at night at about, I don't know, two, 3,000 feet. Okay, you're trying to stay awake. That in and of itself is a feat, okay? There's no windshield in this plane. It's instruments. Just look out the front of the plane, you gotta stick your head out the window, okay? So he flies all the way to Paris by himself, 33 and a half hours. It's an amazing feat. Now, some people like Lindbergh, some don't because of what happened after. Later on. So I don't know if you guys ever heard about the Lindbergh baby. So he married this famous uh, woman. She was uh, uh, Spanish, uh, the, the Mexico ambassador daughter or something. Power couple. They have a baby. And one night, while the baby was asleep in a second floor bedroom, somebody climbed up into the bedroom and kidnapped their child. Baby. Held it for ransom. Okay. International news, Lindbergh baby, kidnapped. They never got the baby back. It was found dead in a shallow grave. Okay. Heartbreaking. Later on, guys, he's, a, he's an aviator. He's a flyer, right? As Germany was taken over by Hitler and the Nazis, okay, they started to build an air force. We got any World War II junkies in here that know the name of the German, German Air Force? The Luftwaffe. the Luftwaffe. Okay. So Lindbergh's infatuated by what's going on with Nazi Germany. And when we have to choose sides between Germany and Britain, who's been our longtime friend, we choose Britain, Lindbergh chooses Germany. And so a lot of people lost a lot of respect for Lindbergh during that time period, okay? So he's kind of a controversial figure, uh, an international figure, hero, yeah, sure, for time, okay? All right, you know who that is? Henry? Henry Ford, okay? Now guys, when we started with the factory, we started with steam factories, steam-powered factories, okay? Coal-powered factories, now they figured out how to use electricity to power the factory, which is going to make it more efficient than ever. Okay? And so this guy, Frederick W. Taylor, you might have studied him last year, comes up with ways to make the factory more efficient. The more efficient you are, the more what you make. Yeah, the more money, the more profit you have. So, guys, in, in business, in engineering, these, this efficiency, efficiency, efficiency in private business, okay? Uh, and Frederick W. Taylor is really kind of a forebearer in that, okay? Um, this is the assembly line. So you put the chassis of the car on the assembly line, and then as it moves, you put the tires on, steering wheel on, put the brake pedal on, you know, and, it, and you do it, okay? 
So it went from uh, 14 hours to assemble a Model T to 93 minutes they could put together a car. And one was rolling off the assembly line every 10 seconds by 1925. It's like building a go-kart, guys. Okay, seriously. Could you build a car today in 93 minutes, even though we have robots that help us and so forth? We got too many electronics. We got computers in our cars. We got all kinds of stuff, you know, automatic windows. It's a funny thing. You're sitting in the car. Person next to you says, Hey, will you roll down that window? What do you mean, roll it down? Any of you guys still have a car that rolled down? You do? Yeah, well, okay, well, it's not like, it's not my car. So it's my granddad's car that we're fixing up. Oh, okay. And it's like his old truck. Yeah. But we still use the term. Yeah. Yeah. Even though you're just pushing a button. Roll down the window. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Now we got all this stuff that we're making toasters. Vacuum cleaners, washing, all this crap, right? Now we got to sell it, okay? So by selling these, we're going to advertise, right? And so we see a huge boom to the advertising industry, all right? So what kind of, back then, they had this type of advertising, newspapers, magazines, billboards, direct mail, radio. Radio was pretty new. Um, you see a huge jump in that, okay? I have, I have a degree in... Marketing, my first time I went to college, and so I, I dabbled in the advertising industry quite a bit. Um, it's a tough industry. Are you guys thinking about going into advertising? Okay. you got to have some talent, okay? Um, I was a graphic artist for a while. Okay. So, like, I would design things for print, like in a newspaper, okay? And then I started working with, like, some really talented people. And I'm like, dude, I'm never going to be as good as that person. Okay? Because I'm not an artist. Did some of you guys draw pretty good at art, drawing, painting and stuff? Like, from hand? I, I, I am just, like, blown away by those people. Aren't you? The ones that can really draw like that? I just think that's amazing. But they have that gift. And I think it is a gift, right? Like you either have it or you don't. Kind of like math. Yeah. I can't just picture it in my head and do it. Some people can do that. So I start working with those people. I'm like, dude, I'm going to go do something. There's, you know, I'm making business cards. And these guys are like producing crazy, great stuff. But anyhow, okay. Um, yeah, so if you look at advertising, it's kind of interesting because when they try and sell you something, they're not just selling you the product. So whether it's like mouthwash or Mercedes Benz. So mouthwash, they all try and make everybody, if you ever watch their commercial, they might try and make everybody feel like they have bad breath. So you use their product, you know what I mean? Uh, and Mercedes, what are they selling? Comfort? Beauty? Status? Yeah. I mean, so you're selling more. You could even throw sex up there. You know, like, I don't know if you've ever heard that. Sex sells. You know, it's sexy. You gotta sell that, okay? Uh, and now the advertising today has just gotten, like, creepy, right? So, like, you Google something, and then all of a sudden you open YouTube, and there's an ad for it. Right? They're tracking you. There's no privacy. Creepy. And people will pay good money for your information. You're in the business. You're in the, I'm in the market for a new car. I Google, you know, Dodge truck. Boom, boom, bang, bang, bang. Dude, I already bought one. Leave me alone. Okay, now, uh, this we get really good at. Buy now, pay later. Okay. Now, like if you were uh, lived in a small town like Wichita or Colwich or something, you go to the grocery store and you say, "Hey, I, I need these groceries, but I don't I don't get paid till you know Friday." They'll let you buy it on credit and you come back on Friday when you get your paycheck and you pay them. They would let you do that. It's kind of an honor system, all right? Um, 
But then we get into, with all these new products, you know, $1 down, and you can buy these new set of tires, okay? You just got to pay this much every month, okay? Um, and so people are really good at borrowing money. Uh, by 1928, so $1 billion was owed on, mo on automobiles, okay? So we were doing this. We were good at it. Now, we didn't have credit cards back then, okay? Uh, I can remember the 1970s, my mom had a first and she had like freaking 12 different credit cards. And she had a credit card for J.C. Penney. She had a credit card for Sears. She had a credit card, uh, Diners Club, Montgomery Ward. Okay, all, they all had their own credit cards. And okay, now we just have visas, right? Visa kind of won. You had to buy Discover, Visa, MasterCard, American Express. I think Visa's won, okay? Most people use Visa. Um, now, I get cash back on this. Okay, but you got to be very careful with these. People listen to this. So you go off to college. You're like, man, I don't have money to buy my textbooks. So you get a credit card because they send you a credit card application. No annual fee. Here, use it. You qualify. All right. So you put your five hundred dollars worth of textbooks on the credit card, right? So I hope I'm not just flashing my number on this video. Go back and look at that. Um, <laughs> anybody know how to edit one of these videos? Uh, yeah, so you got five hundred dollars, right? You put it on your credit card. They send you your bill. It says this is what you have to pay this month: ten dollars. Now the interest on that five hundred dollars is fourteen percent, or twenty percent, or twenty-one percent. And so you get the bill the next week, you pay it should be 490, right? No, but with $500 with interest, now you owe $511. You know what your payment is, minimum payment this week, this month? $10 again. So you make the minimum payment and the amount goes up because of the interest. Okay? That's how credit cards make money. Okay? Now what I do is I pay mine off every month. And then I get the cash back. So if I use this enough, the next time I want to take a vacation, pay for my flights with the points that I got from the credit card. So I'm sticking to them. That's all the suckers out there that don't pay their credit card bills that they're making money off of. You know what I mean? I've had friends with like $30,000 worth of credit card debt. It's crazy, okay? It's, you gotta be careful. Debit cards are different, right? You don't have money in your account, you can't use it. That's different. So go ahead and use it. But the credit card does help you build up credit. Like when you want to borrow money, it shows that you pay it back and stuff like that. Okay. All right. Now, guys, to this point, I've talked about two causes of the Great Depression. One, tariffs. Two, war debts. Three is this. The last line in this section, okay? Wages rose about 26% over this decade. Productivity went up 40%. I mean, wages going up 26% is good, right? I mean, people are making 26% more money. But as a society, we're producing 40% more of goods, which means there's more goods being produced than we have the purchasing power to buy. Follow me? So, like, if you own a car lot, okay, and you got all these cars on the lot, and people are buying them, right? And then you've overproduced, there's not enough buyers. So, at the car lot, you have more inventory than normal. So, the car lot calls the factory and says, look, don't send me as many cars this month, because I still have a bunch. Does that make sense? So, if enough Dodge dealers call over there and say to the factory, hey, stop sending me cars. What happens back at the Dodge factory? They slow down, right? And when they slow down production, what are they going to do? They're going to lay off workers. And that means there's more people without money to buy cars or anything. You follow me? And when there's fewer people to buy the cars or anything else, then production in those other areas begins to slow down too. 
and then there's more people laid off and fewer people to buy the product. You see the spiral, the downward spiral here? Did you follow that? Okay, this is one of the major causes of the depression. And we start to see this by 1927, a slowdown by 1927. But the stock market doesn't reflect it. The stock market's going to keep going up as production slows down. See? So they don't match each other. That's going to help lead to the stock market crash, which I will discuss in detail tomorrow. Sound good? Peace. Like and subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.